While England brought football to the world, the brand of football that most fall in love with was born from Brazil. That joie de vivre approach, pushed further by an entire nation that is insanely passionate for the sport. There's no wonder why Brazil boasts so many iconic rivalries. Fla Flu, the Flamengo and Fluminense rivalry. Granal, Grêmio vs Internacional, Atletico vs Cruzeiro. São Paulo, one of the biggest cities in the world, has room for a few Brazilian giants. But today, we're focusing on the Derby Paulista, considered to be one of the biggest rivalries in world football. Welcome to Rabona TV's Roots of the Rivalry, where today we're covering our first Brazilian rivalry. Thanks for joining me and a few legends. To those who support o Vertão, a familiar face welcomes you. Atenção, nação palmeirense, bem-vindo à série Raízes da Rivalidade. And a warm welcome to the Corinthians supporters out there from a giant within the club. Atenção, um bando de loucos, bem-vindos à série Raízes da Rivalidade. So now that we're all feeling welcomed and comfortable, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and turn those notifications on. And we'll hear some words from another former player later on in the video. But beyond that, let's go. Starting with the foundational history of the two clubs, not their entire history, just their early history, before getting into the reason for their rivalry. Corinthians are up first. As mentioned in the intro, the English brought football to the world. Many clubs around the world can trace their roots in some way or another to England, and in the case of Corinthians, they're no exception. As their own history states, an English club by the name of Corinthians FC from London was touring through São Paulo, and on August 31st, 1910, some workers from the São Paulo Railway Company watched them play a friendly match in the neighborhood of Bom Retiro. It's said that five of these workers were so engrossed by the match that they immediately discussed starting a football club of their own. Football at this time was still for the elite, as we know from plenty of other stories. Even purchasing a ball was a big ordeal for the working class of Bom Retiro. And so the aim right from the outset was to provide a sporting club that was accessible to all. Here's Estevan Chicone from Brazilian media company Grupo Bandarantes. Corinthians was uh, founded by the low class workers. Uh, because of that, today Corinthians is known like uh, in Portuguese, time do povo. In English, the People's Club. And that's what they were on September 1st, 1910, when they were founded, and still identify as to this day. As for the name, there's a bit of a trend in football to use the names of football teams that inspire your club, or to use an anglicized name. It was in fashion at one time, given that the English were the ones who brought football to the world. And the naming of clubs in South America with an English name was seen as an ode to the original, so to speak. That's why there's a Liverpool Football Club in Uruguay, and why there are teams in Argentina called Newell's Old Boys, or a Chilean side called O'Higgins Club. For Corinthians, as I'm sure you guessed, one of the founding members, Joaquim Ambrosio, suggested in a meeting on September 5th, 1910, that they named their newfound sporting club after the English team that had inspired them. And a few minutes later, the first president of the club, Miguel Battaglia, announced, quote, the name of sport club Corinthians Paulista is adopted for our guild. According to the Folia de São Paulo, Corinthians played their first match on September 14, 1910 against Union Lapa, a very respectable side from the area, and lost just 1-0. Not bad for a fledgling club. On that same day, they played another match, this time against Atletico Lapa, in which they won 5-0, and the crowds that were taking interest from the side of the pitch became fans. And so why do they play in white and black? As the story goes, they started their football journey wearing just plain white t-shirts, shirts that doubled as their work uniforms. But once they had raised enough funds, they bought cream colored shirts with black trim. But as time went on, the cream faded to white, et voila, the white and black of Corinthians was born. In 1914, Corinthians won their first league title and in an extremely impressive fashion, not dropping a single point throughout their campaign, something that had never been done before in the São Paulo Championship, a championship that was in its 15th season at the time. However, it was also in 1914 that their biggest rival came to be, and at the cost, if only slightly, of the people's team. During the 19th century, Brazil was in dire need of laborers for the agricultural sector of the country, and thus opened their doors to Europeans that were looking to make a living and were willing to uproot their lives. In Italy, due to economic turmoil and a lack of jobs, many Italians were seeking opportunities abroad. 
Thus, Brazil's need for workers and the Italians' needs for work was a marriage of convenience, with about 1 million Italians immigrating from Italy to Brazil between 1880 and 1900. Where am I going with this? Stick with me. So many of these Italians ended up in Sao Paulo. The Italian community in Sao Paulo is huge. I think okay. it's the number one uh, besides Italy. It's wow. huge, huge, huge. Yeah, we, we have a lot of neighbors uh, with Italian names, Italian customs in Sao Paulo. It's, uh, it's huge, huge. With the growing community of Italians within Brazil and with Italian clubs Pro Vercelli and Torino touring the country and making a stop in São Paulo, the people of the city decided that now was the time that the Italian community had a club of their own. And so, on August 26th, 1914, 46 members of the community gathered to form a new club, Palestra Italia. The word palestra is a Greek word that roughly translates to gymnasium or a place where physical activity is conducted or practiced. Side note, another Brazilian giant in Cruzeiro was also started by the Italian community in Brazil and was also called Palestra Italia in their early days. But anyways, Palestra Italia in São Paulo was nearly terminated shortly after it had started given that plenty of the club members had to go and fight for Italy in World War I. But beyond that, they played their first official match on January 24th, 1915 against Savoia winning 2-0. Palestra Italia joined the São Paulo Championship in 1916 and became the vice champions of São Paulo in the following year. Now before we get into the first clash between these storied clubs, you're probably wondering, but when did they change their name to Palmeiras? Well, in 1942, in the middle of the Second World War, then leader of Brazil, Getúlio Vargas, decreed that no entity within Brazil could use a name that related to any of the Axis powers from the war, those being Germany, Japan, and of course, Italy. Well, that meant that Palestra Italia was forced into changing their name. Initially, they changed it to just Palestra de São Paulo, but that wasn't good enough, and thus they changed it to Palmeiras. So this is where I figured it would be best to speak to those that are very close to the rivalry in order to hear about some of the biggest flashpoints and what it is that divides these teams. We'll speak to Esteban Ciccone, who you've heard from already, Filippo from Tactical Manager TV here on YouTube, who by the way was absolutely instrumental in the making of this video, I couldn't have done it without him, so I've linked to his channel below, do check it out. And then we'll hear from someone who has played in this derby plenty of times. You'll see. But let's go back in time a bit here. When did Palmeiras and Corinthians first play each other? That was in 1917. Corinthians were on a lengthy unbeaten run until they met their big green rivals, Overdown. The score, 3-0 Palmeiras, all three goals being scored by Kitano Izzo, good Italian name. But the rivalry, or at least some animosity, had probably started before the match had started. The history said that uh, some uh, Corinthians founders leave the club to, found, to found another club mm -hmm. and they start with Palmeiras. So that's uh, revival starts with this. That was the origin. That probably started some type of rivalry, just had a little bit of hatred at the time from the switching to another team and they were local and it was considered a foreign team. As you said, it was Palestra Italia. So I think that did contribute at the time, but I do think it played a big role. So that seems like it could be the initial point of rivalry or discontent between the teams, with Corinthians feeling slighted and losing some of their players to Palmeiras or Palestra Italia at that time. But since then, the rivalry has largely been a competitive one, with each team battling fiercely to be superior to the other. In fact, some stories claim that after Palmeiras had defeated Corinthians 8-0 in 1933, the biggest defeat ever in a derby polista, the Corinthians fans were so incensed that they stormed their team's headquarters, started a fire, so it says, and the president of the club was forced to step down. That's how high stakes these matches between these two clubs are. Fast forward 66 years, 1999, and elevate this derby to a continental level. The Copa Libertadores, Palmeiras beats Corinthians twice in the road in 1999 and 2000. Was two games between Corinthians and Palmeiras, and Palmeiras beats Corinthians twice on penalties. The whole country was frozen watching those games. It was insane. And after the second one, uh, Corinthians fans they went into the club and try to to beat the players after that game we have another final between them 
in uh, for the the state championship and it was a big big fight with the players because the rivalry at that time i think was in the most peak for the corinthians and palmeiras it was insane in brazil what i've noticed is any moment is memorable but you you can have a coach that's doing all right if he loses to palmeiras as a corinthians coach or vice versa it can he can lose his job right there and a big part of that is down to how competitive these two sides are i'm not sure that you can find a more evenly balanced rivalry when it comes to results both from a match by match basis and as far as finals won against each other finals where it's corinthians versus palmeiras i think it was 21 finals between corinthians and palmeiras uh, palmeiras won 11 and corinthians 10 the numbers say corinthians has 128 victories against palmeiras and palmeiras has 128 victories against corinthians a lot of the times you have two teams that they're rivals just because they're local, but one of them dominates. For example, Manchester United and Manchester City for decades. Now it's switched a little bit, even though it's kind of balanced now. But Palmeiras and Corinthians, it's it's as balanced as it gets. You just said, look at how many games they played each other, and it's even. How is that even possible? But while odds are relatively even competitively, there is a slight, slight aspect that points towards a financial disparity. Now, it's not as if Palmeiras is the club of the bourgeoisie or while well, Corinthians is the club of the lower class or anything like that. But there is a bit of a financial superiority when it comes to the clubs themselves. And this swings in favor of Palmeiras. But I also think that it has to do something from an economic standpoint. And I know it's weird, but Palmeiras is seen as a very wealthy club, while Corinthians is um, what we call in Brazil a time do povo, which is from the populated, the, the people. Palmeiras, they have the first cooperation in Brazil with Parmalat in 1993. Was a big, big sponsor from Palmeiras, like a, a partner. I think was the first big partner in a Brazilian club. Uh, they put uh, people to work with Palmeiras. They bring a lot of money to Palmeiras. But after that, Corinthians tried to do the same in uh, 1998, I guess, but uh, doesn't work like uh, Parmalat Palmeiras. And so we had Clebon, a Palmeiras legend in the intro, Chicão, a Corinthians legend in the intro, and finally, we have Renato Abreu, who represented Corinthians, to speak about what it's like to play in this Clásico. Bom, falar desses dois times é, é sempre um prazer, né? A rivalidade é muito grande. Ela consegue é, mobilizar todas as pessoas que estão envolvidas no clássico, desde os jogadores até as pessoas que estão fazendo as reportagens. Então se mobiliza todo mundo, a emoção toma conta do jogo, né? a rivalidade ela cresce a cada momento, a cada, a cada partida, a cada minuto, a cada momento que se encontra no jogo. Então é, eu que tive esse prazer de jogar no Corinthians quatro anos, sei bem o que representa isso. Né? E independente da situação que esteja, as duas equipes sempre buscam resultado positivo, Elas procuram sempre mostrar dentro de campo é, um poder ofensivo muito grande, né? criando muitas, muitas chances, criando muitas jogadas e também tendo um pouquinho de arranca-rabo dentro do campo. Eu sei muito bem a dimensão que se torna quando se joga um clássico, a rivalidade, o estado, ele se mobiliza todinho para um grande jogo. Então é o seguinte, em duas palavras, falar o que realmente representa um clássico Corinthians e Palmeiras. Rivalidade total. Independente da situação, a rivalidade ela é sempre colocada em primeiro plano. So I think in order to answer the question that this entire series poses, what is the root of this rivalry? I think it starts like this. Initially, there was some animosity between the two clubs due to the players who left Corinthians in order to start Palestra Italia or Palmeiras. From there, the local turf aspect of this came into play. When you have two teams so close to each other, local dominance is inevitable. You get tired of seeing each other. There's a slight hint of Palmeiras being the wealthy team, as Filippo said, though that's not at the heart of this, I don't think. And finally, there's the competitive and sporting aspect. This, to me, seems to be the root of this rivalry, the never-ending pursuit to be superior to your rival. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope you learned something new. I want to thank everyone who was part of this video as it was a joy to make, a dream come true. And a special thanks to Filippo from Tactical Manager TV. Be sure to check out his channel. You'll love it, I promise you. Beyond that, a like goes a long way to helping out the channel as does a subscription if you enjoyed yourself. My name's Adrian. 
This is Rona TV and enjoy the Derby Paulista. Ciao.